Yeah. Um, before we even get to that, all right, Erica. So I was watching a clip from the Joe Budden podcast, and they were talking about this girl said, "I don't date anyone that my friends have ever dated or talked to, or anyone who has ever been attracted to my friend. Like, never, no, nah, not gonna happen." So they're giving her situations and in, in scenarios, and she was like, "No." So <clears throat> I commented. I said, "So if you're in a friend group, I don't know you. I've never met you." I take one of your friends on a date or two. Nothing happens. We just decide this ain't it. I meet you two or three years later and you find out and you find out I took your friend on a date two or three years ago, but nothing happened. In her eyes, I'm off limits because I took your friend on a date at one point in time and y'all are still friends. Do you agree with that? Would you feel the same way? We went on one or two dates. Nothing happened. We didn't have sex. Nothing. We just like, eh, this ain't it for me. Yeah. I, I would agree with it. Um, I would only because I've seen it play out. I've only seen it play out where the person basically that you agreed you ain't really like like or anything like that, they will get jealous and kind of like territorial over it. And it just it causes so much of a riff. You know what I mean? That is the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Yeah, it. but people, like... I understand it, though. Yeah. I understand yeah. it. I do, because I went to college with people like that. Like, they would have, yeah. like, dudes would, like, have sex with a girl or, like, flirt with a girl and act like, like, that's their wife. It's like, you don't own her, bro. But yeah. beyond that, it's like, I guess I'm just different. Like, yeah. to be 1,000% honest, literally the only thing for me, for me, the only thing that would make me feel away is if I still had feelings for the person. And that's what it really boils down to. And I think that's why people don't want to engage with it. Because but um, but if I take you on one honest. or two dates, three years ago, I took yeah. you on one or two dates. After those dates, you was like, nah, Rob, I ain't, you know, you cool, but nah. We don't even talk no more. I ain't talked to you in two or three years. I meet your friend but, out somewhere. Hold on. I don't know your friend. Never <laughs> met your friend. I meet your friend out somewhere. We kick it. We vibing. She finds out, oh, yeah. I went out with Rob two or three years ago. We went on a couple dates, but nothing happened. That would invoke feelings in you? Two or three years ago, you ain't talk to me. We ain't do nothing. We ain't kiss. We ain't hug. You you decided, nah, this nigga whack or whatever. You did not want to mess with me. But because of that, <laughs> I can't date none of your friends? What? Yeah, it's like... That's weird. Now, I could see if I was thing. around all of y'all and seen all of y'all and knew all of y'all. That's different because there's familiarity there. But, like, I ain't even meet none of y'all. I ain't seen none of y'all. Y'all y'all might not even know my name. Mm -hmm. But, okay. It's, it's that thing where it's like, I don't want you unless I say I like, you know what I mean? Where I don't like, want you until somebody else has you. Exactly. That That's where it kind of stands out. So, in order to, like, kill it, a lot of people, they're just like, let me know who you've ever been on a date with. Let me know who you were ever at one point interested in. So that there's no, that doesn't just rise out of nowhere. Because that's what a lot of people will do is, oh, I'm not really feeling them, da-da-da-da. They see that you moved on and with someone who they might know, and they're like, wait, come back. Um, so why is my mom opening the garage? <laughs> There's literally no reason for her to open the garage right now. The hell? Anyway, I understand what you're saying. I just think it's, mm -hmm. I think it's weird. Me personally, literally, maybe I'm weird because like literally anybody in my life can literally date any one of my exes and I would not feel a way about it because I don't, I don't, yeah. uh, but my thing is this, I don't own you. We had our time together. We made a decision not to be together. For me, there's no lingering, oh, I want you back or blah, 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 because that was the case then yeah, I'd let it be known. Now, I will say, if you know about it or you want to do that, you should holler at the person and be like, yo, man, like, I know you messed with her a few years ago. Like, is it cool? Like, I don't know if y'all still dealing or whatnot. But like, for me, it's like, it's crazy that people, people don't even be that territorial in the relationship. No, like, they don't. Or protective of their, like, you protective of someone that you literally have no ties, no right, no attachment to. I just find that, I get it. Again, I get it because... For some reason, any it evokes feelings, but it's like, why? I'm not gonna stand in the way of somebody else's happiness. You know, it's like, yeah, I went to this used car dealership and I got this car, but I was like, eh, I test drove it and I let it put it back on a lot, 
but I don't want none of my friends to go buy this car. But it's gonna sit on this lot. <laughs> but I don't want none of y'all to buy it. Cause if you buy it, then I'ma be mad. Now I don't want it and I'm not gonna buy it, but you can't either. Huh? Nigga, get out of here, like, yo. I feel that it's different with exes though. Because it's, yeah, it's, it's different with exes. I understand that yeah. I'm on the extreme side of that. I mean, I get yeah. that. But I that's just how I feel. But that's also because all of my well, two of them cheated, so really, good luck. But the the <laughs> other two, I mean, it ended am, am, amicably, and like I have closure. Like there's no, I guess that's the difference for me. Like I have conversations with people, and I get closure. So like I know when the chapter is closed, and if the mm-hmm. chapter is closed, the chapter is closed. Who am I to stand in the way with? Like after that, your life and your business is your business. Um, now, if you're trying to be vindictive or something, well, it actually wouldn't work on me. Like, if you try to go date my brother or my frat brother or one of my close frat brothers, my feelings aren't there anymore. So, it's mm-hmm. not going to bother me. Like, I get how it looks and how it's quote-unquote perceived, but it's like, if I'm done with that situation and there's no lingering feelings, I'm not trying to tiptoe back, we not smashing behind closed doors and all, like, like go do you. Like, you know what I'm saying? Don't be talking about me, but... <laughs> I guess I'm just weird like that, yo. I, mm, interesting. But I get both sides. Mm-hmm. I, re- I actually do. Yeah, people don't, you don't want it until someone else has it. And that's what it all boils down to. And it will cause rifts oh. in friendships. You saw it play out, you said. Yeah. Like, that's what we're going to start oh, with. Hold on. Let me oh. let me start the show. We're going to absolutely start with that. Yeah. What's going on, everybody? It's your boy, Rob, hosted from My Experience Podcast. Shout out to the Joe Button Podcast for such a riveting topic. I need to bring some people on here to talk about that. Um, yeah. So your boy, Rob, is back. Erica is back. And you hear how Hello. we starting. How Hello. was your day today? It was better than yesterday. Yesterday made me want to just like jump down the stairs like, <laughs> like <today>. what <laughs> like lowest from a family guy just like airborne like basically. oh my god but today was a better day so that means I'm that glad. the weekend's getting closer yeah <laughs> Yeah, the weekend is definitely getting closer. Um, I appreciate your flexibility and your time because I'm working four 10-hour shifts this week. I was tired, and I was like, yo, you have to go to the gym. I'm trying to go to the gym at least three times a week, and Mm -hmm. I was too tired one day, and I was like, if I go when I'm tired, I'm either going to do a shitty workout or I'm going to push myself and I'm going to hurt myself. So I waited, Mm -hmm. and I was like, do you really want to go work out? do these 20 or 30 minutes on these stairs, come home, shower, and try to rush and force the fake energy on the podcast. No, we're not doing that. So we pushed it. So here we are. Y'all going to be getting this the same day we recording it <laughs> instead of a day before. But I mean, hey, yeah, that's how I be. So, OK, back to. We, so you said you saw this play out. So what was what was the actual situation? So there's been so many dang with well, dudes like, dating in the friend group oh my gosh all the time they love doing that so the girl <laughs> but the home girls are okay with it or are they sneaking it's more like mm, i got animosity towards you babes type of thing wait because i've seen it okay so like i've seen it happen and i've seen it play out where like so for instance like currently there's this guy and this girl they know sure well they is never gonna get back together things like that messing around messing around while all in the friend group while this one guy he's been like wanting to talk to her things like that and the dude knows that so it's like dude one dude two so dude one he's messing with this girl knowing that they not serious about nothing whatever Mm -hmm. so he gets fed up he's like you know what at the end of the day i don't want you remember that so she goes off and she's messing with dude two mm-hmm. and everything like that. Messing around, talking to him. All of a sudden, here comes dude one. Hey, big head, what's, what's going on with you? It's all that whole, I don't want you, but because someone else does, now I need to have you type of thing. And it's very immature watching it play off because it does cause a rift in friendships, especially if all of y'all are friends, because it's like, why are you doing this? You just messing with her head basically because you don't really want her to move on fully or anything like that. You just kind of want to have that control and that like sense of you ownership just said over it. somebody. You mm-hmm. that that I think it's the sense of control and ownership. Uh thank God, knock on wood. 
that I never feel that I've never felt that feeling that you said that yeah I've dated someone and then someone else date her and I get mad like it's like yo I'm gonna put my effort and energy into this if it don't work and you say you done you cool this ain't it cool go your separate ways like and it's fine and you are free to date whoever you want I don't own you like that's that's my thing it's like when we go our separate ways I don't owe you anything I don't owe you trust, loyalty, honesty, money, respect, none of that. I don't owe you anything. You can go do whatever you want. I really like I guess is I guess is because I think it's the mess that gets involved. Mm-hmm. Especially like in the scenario I gave in the beginning. Like I that to me that's real stupid. Like, hey, we went on a couple dates two or three years ago. I didn't want anything to do with him. You literally ain't talked to this guy, seen this guy in two or three years, but if he starts dating your friend, You'd be mad. Like, but you had, first of all, you went out with them and already determined you didn't like them. Then you had two or three years to go to spin the block if you chose to and you didn't. But you mad. You say, now nah, he's off limits. Yo, that's, to me, that is so stupid. And that was why I really had to pick and choose very carefully in college because a lot of people feel the same way. And again, I get it. I don't agree with it, but I get it. I understand it. And I had to pick and choose. I went to a small HBCU. So, like, if you dated a sorority girl, like, oh, well, you can't date none of my line sisters. Well, damn, that's 40 women I can't date now (laughs) because I choose you. Like, you had to be careful. Well, you know he tried to holler. Like, I used to hate that. You know they tried to holler at me. So, so what? So what? Like, are you kidding me? Like, it was like everyone was pissing everywhere trying to mark all their territory, and there was, like, none left. Like, it was so weird, man. But I, I don't get down like that, man. That's That's... Nah, because even my homeboy, he he tried to holler at a girl, and it went nowhere. But me and her was kicking it before. And then when they was like, they didn't even really do anything. And I was like, yo, like, I think Shorty feeling me like, you mind? He was like, nah, go ahead. You know what I'm saying? And so I tried. Didn't work with me either. And we Like, there was zero issues, zero problem. But that's my man. So I was like, yo, let me holler at him first to make sure there's no whoop do whoop do whoop do whoop whoop and that never came up again. That was never a problem. That was a never issue. It never had an impact on our friendship. But I just find that that's, I can get it in certain situations and scenarios. But like the one that I gave, I'm just like, okay. People, yeah. like you said, people like the ownership and control. And that's, that's weird. But yeah. Okay. Okay. And they'll do it. Who is this? Co- okay. Uh, you ready with these headlines? I'm about to. You get the music is playing. <laughs> do, 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 do. Oh, okay. So I don't need to wait for a cue for Mike. Headlines. Twenty-five feet away from you. Go ahead, yo. Hey. <laughs> I I am leaning far away. Sorry. Um. So remember a couple episodes ago when we were talking about the woman who was. <laughs> basically known as Brick Lady. Wait a minute, yo. What What? up? I know you did not just say a couple of episodes ago. Yo, that was mad long ago. That was like 15 episodes ago. These these weeks are just blurring together. I'm sorry. These weeks are just blurring together. Go ahead, yo. I can't remember. Yo, she said a couple. (laughs) You disrespectful to our audience. Go ahead, yo. (laughs) If y'all listening now, y'all were listening back then. (laughs) Word, word, word. Where um, the lady was known as Brick Lady because she was hit in the face with a brick, allegedly, is what she said after she refused to give a guy her phone number. And she had a GoFundMe, which raised about $42,000. 40, yeah, $42,000. Well, now, unfortunately, she's accused of fraudulent and scam behavior because she's being charged with felony theft by deception because her account of the assaults, the average, aver- mm, I can't even talk today. That lets you know I'm ready for the weekend. But her account of the aggravated assaults did not match up with video evidence that detectives have found about. So that is why she's being charged and also why the GoFundMe has been shut down. And also a lot of people on social media are just saying, we knew it, she's a liar, she's a liar. Still don't really know all of the facts with it because it's an ongoing investigation, but 
definitely hearts out to her because at the end of the day, she did look like she got hit in the face with something. Don't know what, but that's about it on that one. And your last headline before I butcher anything else is that North Carolina man, Ronnie Long, has spent 44 years in prison on a rape, basically, that he had a wrongful conviction on and ended up receiving a $25 million settlement. Fam. That's just a lot. A lot of years for a wrongful conviction, and money does not even equate to the time, his practically his whole life. If anything. Yeah, 44. Your life is over. I mean. Your life is over. Sorry not to say it like that, y'all. But I mean, I don't know what, how old he was when you went in. But like, if you 20. Yeah. What the hell? Wow. That like, sucks. So it's like, he will never get that time back. He will never get those relationships, connections, any of that back. And then also to try to get back into society yeah. and people still view you as like this evil person yeah. when you're not. And the world is a completely different place. How long yeah. is he locked up? 44 years. Yeah. In a 1976 with an all white jury. 1976 to now, 2024. That is, I don't even understand that's how not you even, do get back into I don't think that's society. enough money. No, it's not. Like, there's so much. Everything has just changed. It's a completely different world. Jesus. So. Man. Oh, just a shoot. Lot. I just noticed something. My mom's going to be pissed. All right. Uh -oh. uh, <laughs> I didn't do it. Um, really quick, y'all. <sighs> we not the political podcast. I'm not into government and elections and all that stuff. However, <clears throat> these presidential candidates are out here and they talking and Trump is still very popular and Trump is still winning votes and people are still wanting Trump as president. Please, we need to keep him out of office y'all. I understand the choices that we have are 3,000 years old. <laughs> they are not top quality candidates for president. <laughs> and we are truly choosing between the lesser of two evils at this point. I mean, I, they're not evil, but well, one of them, I think, one of them I think is. Uh, yeah, so this is depressing. I'm gonna end headlines now. <laughs> headlines gets depressing after a minute. Yeah, we, uh, I gotta, we gotta, we gotta find. Well, we did. Uh, I mean, mm -hmm. he got paid. That was positive, but Jesus. We need some positive news, y'all. That's your, know. that's your job. Oh well, I what mean, mean for like oh. everybody, like we need to, <laughs> like we need to go out there and make some positive news. Like who's yeah, gonna give that's back? True. There's some positive news out there. Um, oh dang it, I sent it to you. Hold up, I'm Wait. not. I'm not gonna cue the music. I forgot you don't be on social media. I gotta get you on social media. Where is? Oh, because you keep sending it to my professional account, and I. Was you have a professional it. Instagram account. Yeah, that's the one that you're sending it to. Oh, you actually have an Instagram account? I do. With stuff on it? No pictures, but yes. You a loser, y'all. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm gonna get it to you. You have a burner account. Well, just follow yeah, my, my basically. page is public, so just follow me. and. Okay, yeah. see? Ralph Yarl, the child who got shot in the head when he was trying to pick his brother up after school, he did something else amazing. I can't remember what it is, y'all. I'm sorry. I don't have the article in front of me. But he did something else, and his story is just continuing to be um, inspiring to me. I just wanted to put that out there. Um, let me see if I can find him real quick. You didn't send that one to me. Uh, oh, you've been sending a whole bunch of stuff to me. Good Lord. Where have I been? I don't been? know if I'd say a lot. Uh, he mm -hmm. earned... 
He plays the bass clarinet. He earned some type of award. God dang it. I can't find it. I don't want to mess it up. Sorry, y'all. <clears throat> All right. So I had an interesting topic. So we're going to start, I guess we'll start with, um, what do you want to be remembered for? Mm-hmm. So I wanted to start the top of the year this before we start getting into all the messiness and the craziness. So uh, I'll let you marinate. Have you marinated on that question yet? I saw it and I said, ooh, now we're getting deep and closed out the message thread because I was like, ah, the feels. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I, I'm very interested to hear your answers because when I was your age, I don't know what I would have said. Exactly. But, <laughs> yeah. But now that I'm older and I've kind of been through a lot. And the other thing that becomes very interesting when you get older, your reputation follows you like oh, yeah. a lot. Like people say stuff about you and you're known for things. Um, whether it's true or not, whether it's true or not. But one thing that like all my friends and all people say is like Rob is a really good dude. Like he's really helpful. He's really genuine. Um, and I can't really ask for more than that. Uh, I'm also going to be known for this podcast because a lot of people recognize and understand that this is not just a fluke or, uh, something I'm doing in passing. This is episode 301? Mm-mm. Not 301. We like 303 at this point. Oh, shizzle. I put out the wrong... Oh, I didn't put the advertisement out yet. Uh, no. Like- this is 302. 302? Hold up, yo. What is this? Pay attention. No, this is 302. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Eh, did I change the episode title on my phone? Eh. Shit. Past 301. 301 was last week. It feels like a lifetime ago. Oh my god, yo. Yeah, I'm supposed I'm the older one. I'm supposed <laughs> to be the one having these memory lapses. Time Not is slipping you. away from me. What is this? Thursday release day. I need to find this thing. But uh yeah. So I already hear what people are saying about me. And to be honest with you, uh, I'm cool with that. <laughs> I am cool with that. It doesn't bother me. Yeah, it's 302. I got it saved already. I got the artwork and stuff on my phone. Where the hell is it, though? It's not showing up. But I, I'm glad that that's what people are saying. And it's even people who don't know me like that say that about me because other people have said that about me. Uh, I don't really have people saying anything bad, nasty, or negative about me. There's been a couple people in my life who have, and I laugh because I'm like, I don't know where you're getting that from, or maybe there was an instance, but I'm like, who I am to my core, what I do on a consistent basis, what the majority of people say is what it is. But I do want to be remembered as that. I also want to be, again, like I said, remember for this podcast and a promoter of positivity, but I also want to be a member for someone who inspired others. Like, <clears throat> it's, as you can tell from the headlines, it's easy to promote and spread negativity and feed into that and like and share and subscribe and all this stuff. Like, I send my friends all kind of doofy stuff, uh, but I send them funny stuff, not really like destructive, crazy stuff. And it brings me back to the core of this podcast. Like, this is to promote positivity, just lighten the mood, talk about life, not necessarily all the drama and junk that's happening, because literally there's 5,000 other podcasts you can go listen to to do that. Where's the separation to people's personalities? Do you even really care? Are you truly invested? And on top of that, what is it really adding to your life? Is it adding any value? Is it helping you out of a dark place? Is it giving you ideas? Is it giving you inspiration? Or is it just entertainment? It's probably mostly just entertainment, right? But I know that we have some drop some gems. We've had people tell some powerful stories. Um, and I and I do when I see people. Everyone doesn't comment. Everyone doesn't subscribe. Everyone doesn't send messages. But when I see people in person, they're like, yo, man, I really like your podcast. Or, man, I I be looking at your messages on Instagram. Or, you know, I like your posts on social media. Like, that's what it is for me. Like, if I post something or if I say something and you saw it and it made your day better or it sparked something in you or it was that boost of positivity you needed, that's all I want. Anything else is icing on the cake. What else do you want to, what do you want to be remembered for, Erica? Mm. I, I really, <laughs> I, 
I really want to be remembered for, and I know this sounds so cliche, whatever, but like loyalty, really want to be remembered as being 10 toes down on anybody that I love and care for, because that's just who I am. And that's what I would hope that the people that I surround myself with can also say about me is that I will support them throughout everything. If they want to go riot, we can riot. If they want to go sleep, we can sleep. I'm down to do whatever. Just know I got your back. Um, so that's one of my big things. And also just really wanting to be remembered as being free spirited. And I know that I say that with kind of sparingly in a way, because I know that my parents and my family, they could see me when I'm stressed or I'm just, I'm not in a good mood, things like that. But I really want to be remembered as a free spirit and also just someone who can laugh at a lot of different things, basically, because having a whole bunch of just negativity surrounding you and that be what you're remembered as, I that's like my worst nightmare. Mm -hmm. I do not want to be brought up like years from now and everything like that and then the mood just gets dim and depressing yes, and i don't want that <clears throat> yeah and it was like if anything i want people if they like bring me up they have like some crazy story to tell about me because i'm always doing something dumb uh <laughs> always doing something <laughs> dumb <laughs> i always am i'm always doing something dumb i'm always laughing at myself uh any terrible voice messages that I send to my friends where I'm just cracking up and everything like that, just playing around, being goofy. I would love for that to be my memory where people who don't even know me can get a feel or an idea of my personality, basically, um, before ever seeing me. I would love that. You want to be the person to when they say, who all coming or who all going to be there? And they say your name that they still want to show up. <laughs> Yup, yup. <laughs> Even like, if they're just like, who? I guess I'll pull through for her. But yup, you sure will, cause who you all, know I'm a who. Who all gonna be there, boy? <laughs> she, you do not. <laughs> people ask that question. You do not want to be the person that causes people not to come exactly. to the festivities, bro. That's no exactly. bueno at all. Especially like if it's like people that you, you've never met. And they are like, they're a friend of a friend. And they're like, oh my gosh, I, I want to meet her. She sounds so cool. And I was like, yeah, girl, come hang with the cool people. Come on. But that's about it. <laughs> okay. Okay. And very loving and caring. So yeah. And also, if you just remember the fact that I love all the animals in the family, I will just be that person who has like a hundred animals in their house in the future. I won't be dirty, but I'll have a hundred animals. <laughs> in my head, I can feel the judgment. In my, in my head, I'm like, I'm never going to her house. Exactly. Yeah, I, I don't, felt the judgment. I don't think about the dirt. I don't like uh I don't like dog the hair. I don't like dog yeah. smell and I do not like the hair. I it would never be like that at my house. Yo, the ever. hair is ridiculous. I've had coworkers and students come to school and them mugs be fuzzy they not built like me they and then, not built like and then the fuzzy one want to bring stuff to the potluck no get your fuzzy dish out of here <laughs> nobody wants your fuzzy food get out of here with that yo not that's like wow me. my cat was trained like a dog when i first got her i said mm -mm, girl remember this this is a black household and you are a black cat <laughs> Not you telling your cat it's a black household. I sure. I did. wonder if they know the difference. Oh, she knows the difference. Has she, she ever knows. lived in a white household? Uh, before I adopted her, yeah. And I said, "Listen here, girl. I don't know how you thought you was gonna run things around here, but you got it wrong." I oh said, "This is a black household, and this I'm is a black family." I'm ending this. I'll be damn. I'll, I'll be damn. I'll be damn. Not you telling. And I bet you she ain't never had to ask twice. And she ain't never had to act out of order. Yo. <laughs> you know what? Another thing I do want to be known for <laughs> is helping to bring Past the Peas app to millions of users and helping people preserve their fam part of their family legacy by passing down recipes and creating collaborative cookbooks. That is actually... Um, a very real thing. You never know what tomorrow holds. And um, 
I know I talk about Pastor P's app on here, and I know some of y'all like really Rob, <clears throat> but um, it's a very real thing, a very serious thing. And one of the things I've done since I've moved back to South Carolina with my mom is cook a lot more. And I realized that my mom does a lot of stuff very effortlessly, and it tastes mm-hmm. so good. And she actually does a lot of simple things that I can't do or don't know how to do. Like I would have to practice at it. And quite honestly, I would miss it. Like, I'm so glad I know how to make her squash casserole. I know how she fries her chicken. I know how she seasons and fries her fish. Um, I know how she cooks her cabbage. I know how she cooks her greens. Like, some, I, I'm, what I want to learn is she does, like, this smothered chicken breast with, like, this gravy. Oh, mm-hmm. my goodness. Like, the chicken just falls apart. You know how hard it is to cook chicken breast sometimes. Mm-hmm. It just falls apart. And I'm like, man, like... These quick little easy dishes, like there's so many. I got to really get in the kitchen and record more and put them in the app. But I'm like, these things need to be preserved. Like there's a reason why people call food comfort food. It's not just about eating and just like, oh, I'm full or, oh, this tastes so good. It's like those things are attached to memories and special places. Like, for instance, one of my favorite things to eat is an Italian sub. And I have a very impeccable memory. My memory tends to, like, when it comes to something that hasn't had an impact on my life, um, my memory is extremely vivid when it comes to this. So, 97, uh, moved to Philadelphia to live with my dad. Actually, this might have been 96. I moved to summer. I think I moved to summer of 96. Anyway, um, there is a deli down the street called Reen's Deli. So... Before that, I'd only basically had Subway. I've never, to my recollection, have had like a real deli sandwich. And they were an actual deli. Um, For those of you who don't know what a deli is, because they may be a lost art, a deli, literally, they just sell meat and cheeses. They slice it. Kind of like how you go in a grocery store. There's literally standalone stores where that's just all that they do. And I know some people are laughing like, really, Rob? But some people might not know. Like, we are far removed from those times, and those places are hard to find. But, yo, they made subs. I got an Italian sub from there. Everything freshly sliced, fresh lettuce, tomato, and onion. Yo, that was like the... I can still taste that sandwich. Like, it was so good. When we're talking, I'm 13 years old, and I remember this. I'm 39 now, but I remember this like it was yesterday. And whenever I wanted something to eat, and they were right next to, um, I feel like the name of the pizza place was Pat's Pizza. But their pizza was absolutely delicious. So whenever I wanted something special to eat, like my dad knew he could not go wrong with a sub or a pizza from there. Um, so now, like, when I go to Publix, I get the Italian. Boar's Head, of course. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> And I love pepperoni pizza to this day. And it's attached to those memories of Philadelphia. My first time trying that. um, Times with my dad. So it's not just about the food. The food just brings me to a place. So in in the present, physically, yes, I am satisfied with what I'm eating. But mentally, it satisfies me as well because it's taking me to a very happy, very, very, very happy place, man. So... That's the kind of stuff I talk about when I talk about Pass the Peas app, man. My mom has so many dishes that take me to a great place. I really actually need to go to Charleston. My Aunt Rosalind makes Hoppin' John and fried chicken on New Year's. Ah! I'll be damned. I'll, I'll be damned. Here we go, here we go, here we go, here we You talking about delicious? Delicious. Mm. So, yeah. I want Pass the Peas app to be... In the phones of millions of users and people jumping and just sharing recipes and preserving that family legacy. Do you have Do you have a special dish or is there some type of food or anything that anyone in your family makes that just you want that forever? It just takes you to a oh place. Oh my goodness! So many. <laughs> the fatness it's came out. Like, it sure did. <laughs> Full swing, but so many. Like I will say, whenever my mom makes, uh, whenever she bakes pound cake. Oh my gosh. I need you to stop. Stop right and there. She does it with the family recipe mm. that they've had throughout the years mm-hmm. that like my grandma does. And they all make it so differently from my great aunt to my grandma and to my mom. But like whenever my mom decides to make a pound cake from scratch, 
Oh my gosh. It just, it brings me back to being like, I want to say maybe like six, seven anytime because I love when a cake's hot, fresh out the oven. Yes. But whenever I knew that she was going to make a pound cake, man, you couldn't tell me nothing. I was up in that kitchen with her because I was like, when do I get the spoon so I can lick the batter? That's why I'm here. <laughs> oh, I remember those <laughs> I just, days. Yeah. And I'd be like, I'm leaving here with something. I said, yes. I'm not in this kitchen for nothing. And I remember like all my brothers, they'd be all up in the kitchen trying to get to the batter. I'm like, nah. I said, I helped. I helped her bake this. <laughs> so I get the batter. And we used to have to like fight over it, basically. And she would give you like a wooden spoon or like someone gets like a big metal spoon, whatever. So whenever she makes like a pound cake, I always get like a flashback to like baking a hot cake in like what 90 degree weather in the middle of july but mm. i was tearing it up yes and everything so that and also whenever um and i know it wasn't anything that was made but like whenever my grandma would come down and visit during the summer and she would make like the biggest fruit tray possible like plums nectarines like cherries with the seeds and um, all these different grapes and then like cheese and crackers and she would just make such a big platter of it and she would leave it out on the kitchen counter for us when we were kids so that because we were just running around outside 24 7 just <laughs> just going crazy we were drinking gatorade propel whatever you name it and because we were just in and out in and out the house in and that out wasn't drinking water out the water hose we were doing that too but because we knew that we had propel and gatorade because my grandma was spoiling us we'd be like oh yeah, my gosh you were spoiled we had water out the yeah water. we had water out the water hose or water out the faucet go ahead yo we would do all of that <laughs> and we ate that all day because she said that we're just kids we're just running around that's the only way that they're gonna eat something it's just to run in the house grab something and run back out yeah before like somebody yells and says you either in or you out Pick one. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> oh yeah. So, Don't whenever be trying to air I, condition the whole neighborhood. Yeah. So it's like whenever I have like fruit and it's like set up on a plate or anything like that, it just it puts me back to being like a kid and just running around like sweat galore, jumping rope, riding bikes, just going crazy. So, I love it. Sorry, my mom is opening the garage again. I don't know what. I can't hear on. it. I can hear. I can see. It's my mic is picking it up. I can see it. I don't know where she's going this late at night. I already went grocery shopping today. I don't know what's happening. <laughs> uh, that sounds wonderful, man. Uh, yeah. I, I, I'm jealous. Now I want cake. My mom made a cake for Christmas. <sighs> There's a cake upstairs right now. I've been taking chunks. <laughs> Don't tell her. <laughs> Man, I'm pissed because my mom made the cake, but she gave away mad pieces, yo. Like, See? her boo thing was over here, and she gave him like three pieces. I'm like, yeah! What hey are you now. doing? Like, what are you doing over here? I mean, yeah. in hindsight, I'm happy because I'm like, I'm back on my diet kick. I've been losing weight. I've been hitting the gym. And that cake is probably the most unhealthy, cake, unhealthy thing that we cook. Uh, that joint, just Ain't all nothing the wrong butter. with the little cheat day. So you're young and your metabolism is high. I just happen to be blessed and I think my metabolism is actually high, but I do have stubborn weight and I do understand that I'm a bit more tired than I like to be sometimes and getting to the gym is not always as easy as I would like for it to be. So I'm very cognizant of what I intake because I'm like, hey, if you overdo it here, you got to overdo it in the gym. We got to have checks and balances like... I ain't fat and sloppy, but I'm trying to keep my body to a certain standard for personal health reasons and so that the future Mrs. Wilson will have something nice and delicious to look at as well. So it takes a lot more balance, okay? Stop giving people bad advice. Oh, man. Is there anything else I want to be remembered for? People are remember me for being a nerdy gamer. Uh, oh, I was known for being... Part of a geek squad in high school. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I hang with the nerd herd for not the nut. I'll yeah. be down. I'll, I'll be down. It was the nerd herd no. and turned into like the weird group of kids where it's like the uh, nerd uh, herd is disrespectful on so many levels. I was I the was down nerd in there. Herd? Yeah, and I'll never forget. I'll never forget. Also, because I wore these glasses, I looked like a Rolo on hey, one yo. of my first weeks. I'll be down. I'll, I'll be down. 
the candy, the Rolo with the, yes. with the caramel in the middle. Mm -hmm. I'll be mm -hmm. down. I, I, I'll be down. Go ahead, yo. Couldn't tell me anything. I was wearing a pair of khaki pants. I thought I was stunting on them. Had my Chuck Taylors on, khaki pants. I had a brown long sleeve on. I'm brown. Had a light brown cardigan on top of that. Had, and then had these black, I mean, not black, but brown, like thick framed glasses. And I was like, I was looking like every bit of a Rolo or a Twix bar, just walking around thinking I was stunting on people, like 50 shades of brown. I'll be, I'll, 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 I'll be down. With the James Brown hairdo, because you know how, like, I'll be down. The hairstylist, they, they would be like, we ain't going to keep it straight. We're going to just bump the ends just a little bit. Those were the days. I wish you had a picture of that. Oh, I do. And I, they're going to be burnt. No, okay? we need to put my, down the um, FME podcast mm -mm, website. Mm -mm. Because my mom, she keep trying to find those pictures and post them for my birthday. I'm like, ma'am, please, please. Give them <laughs> pictures. That's another thing I do want to be known for. I want people to read my blog because they are the deepest, most inner thoughts of a man. And those are some very raw and honest feelings. I actually just put a new blog post on fmepodcast.com. Check it out. I forgot the name of the post, but it's up there. It's very raw, very real, um, very relatable. You've probably been through something like that. Uh, kind of like when you meet someone new, that infatuation stage. But I kind of talk about how now I understand what it is. So instead of getting caught up in it and like being lovesick and all that like we do, I just process my feelings. And actually, this this new connection has unearthed. Well, not I won't say unearthed. Well, no, I can say unearthed. Unearth my feelings. I feel more now. Um, not that I was heartless or anything, but unlock the level. I mean, it was always there, but I've just kind of put like my logic and reasoning and what's in front of me in front of all of that. Like I've just pushed it way to the back. So now it's becoming a bit more balanced. Uh, yeah. But I, and I realize the importance of having those feelings to the forefront because, you know, I want to feel good about the things that I do and the decisions that I make. And I want to enjoy the feeling. And I think what it would happen was unbeknownst to me. My mind and my body were just kind of like, we need to put this defense mechanism in place. You done been through mm -hmm. too much. People done said too many things. People done did too many things. We're going to put this defense mechanism up. And it works, right? But I have been told that I'm cold. I have been told that, <laughs> wow, you just you just do stuff. It's like, you don't care. You're not scared. Well, I was like, no, I feel it. But I don't wear my feelings on my sleeves either. It's like... I can look you dead in the face and say, yeah, I don't want to drive three hours to go to this garden thing and nothing like that. But because I love you, let's go. But I'm not going to be a mopey asshole about it either. Like, let's just get it done type of deal. So I don't know. It's going to be interesting to see what I act like um, when I'm around people now, now that these feelings have been reawakened. Good. Stop cheesing. Ew. Stop <laughs> cheesing. I, I'll be damned. Why are you cheesing? Like, because, because I have a friend who is finally like doing the same thing. Uh -huh. And I'm just like, finally, get get a balance in there. Yeah. Uh yeah. You do need balance. It it, it and it's it matters. It's important. Um, I get it. But, You're human. Ugh. Yes, I am human. Or as Bruce Willis said, my favorite movie, movie, The Fifth Element. Negative. I am a meat popsicle. I'm gonna watch yeah. that tonight. <laughs> I'm gonna watch that tonight before I go to bed. That's gonna be my go to bed movie. Ooh, it was getting late. All right. Um. Yeah. That's what we want to be remembered for. Is there anything else you want to be remembered for at the current time? Mm -hmm. Not at the current time. No. She's mm -hmm. gonna also be known for prom promoting positivity on this podcast. Yeah. yeah that Wow. She Thank you for she, that one. <laughs> she forgot about us in the midst of us. What? Hold up. I'll be down. I'll be down. I'll be down. Thought we were all here, you know? Moving along. So this is a fun <laughs> topic. Uh, this is also going to be Find Out Friday. Comment on this, y'all. So if you could, uh, if you were to leave behind a time capsule for future generations to find, what would you want to put in it? Mm. You want to start this one? You want me to start? No, you start. I put this on X, also known as Twitter, right? <laughs> what did I say? We ain't. Oh, Lord. The navigation of this thing is so funky. 
I was like, uh, but the the hell? Oh, wait a minute. It's a reply. So many tabs. Um, so I posted it on the FME podcast page. I said, I'll put some silly bands. Google that if you don't know what a silly band is. Beyblades, fidget spinners, slime, and a kendama with a note that says, from 2013 to 2016, these items had kids in a frenzy. <laughs> are you Googling? You about no. Oh, you know, I'm not Googling. I know what silly bands are. You went through all those things. Phases. So that was, ooh, where were you in 2013. Thirteen. I was in. <laughs> Damn, bro. I, I was, was in teaching. the eighth grade. I was in the eighth grade. Yo, the, the... I had silly bands all the way up to my elbow. Yeah, it <laughs> I was had serious. silly bands too. Yeah, I had silly bands. Like anytime a student gave me a silly band, I kept it. I never took them off. Like I would wash them like a couple times a week. But mm-hmm. I always like for like a year or two, I had silly bands all the time. I might still have them somewhere. I have them probably in the attic, and then it was back during the time when you had the I Heart Boobies wristbands too. The what? <laughs> the I Heart Boobies like wristband, where they ended up banning them in schools because it was more so for like, I think it was more so for like breast cancer and things like that. But kids were wearing once you got like middle school kids wearing yeah. them, they were like <laughs> boobies and everything. So wow, like, got banned. So I remember. Silly bands for sure, all the way up to my elbows. I had like hundreds of if, them. If you want to see it, so to tell to explain what a silly band is like a rubber band, right? But they came in different colors, but they were in the shapes of different things. Like most yes. of mine were animals. Did they come in any other yeah. type of shapes? Cars too. Cars. Just random objects yeah. at one point. You're right. There would be random yeah. objects. So like you can put them on your wrist. Um they were a nightmare if you had hairy arms. A nightmare. Yeah. Because they, they they don't hang like regular rubber bands. They, there's a little bit of a, for lack of a better word, tension, but not like tight, like I can't, like I'm cutting off my circulation. But yeah, but they're in the shape of all kinds of items. Um, that was cool. I just remember that from teaching because I'm like, yo, these kids, like the kids used to bring the Beyblade Stadium and I had mm-hmm. this one <laughs> I had one kid who was so passionate about it. He'd be like, let it rip. And he would get his ass bust every time. (laughs) (laughs) Yo, he would be so hype. That's what he gets. Oh my gosh, yo. I used to be crying, yo. He would be sitting there so intense and yelling just like in the show. And he would lose, yo. But that, that was actually a pretty neat toy. I, uh, but I, I did not um, enjoy having to take them from kids and giving them back later. Yeah. Um, and I don't know why slime had such a, oh a my surge. Goodness. Like, uh, For no reason. Yeah, when I was a kid, slime was popular. It was called Gak. But Nickelodeon, oh. Nickelodeon was... Do you, are you, do you know what Nickelodeon is? Uh, yes, okay, I'm I was sorry. The, the Kids Choice Awards. I was faithful to Nickelodeon at one point. I have to remember. See, you weren't. Wait, wait, wait where am I going? Sorry. How old? What's our age gap again? 15 years? Mm, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, no. You. Man, Nickelodeon used to be like. First of all, I hated Nick at Night because that's when the adult shows would come on. Oh, I loved it. Felt, felt mature. I'll be damned. Nickelodeon had me in a chokehold because I liked slime. Pause. I liked Wienerville. Has nothing to do with that. Do you remember <laughs> Wienerville? No. <laughs> you t- you write that down. Da- wow. You didn't- <laughs> write it down, yo. Write it okay. down. It is the weirdest shit you will ever Ooh, see. But I love. So basically, like. <clears throat> It was a show, it was a puppet show. And one of the main characters, his head would be there, but he had like the body of a puppet. You gotta listen to it. But I liked like the they had like a band and they would just do all kind of weird stuff. It was dope. Um Guts, which was like American Gladiators for Kids, Legends of the Hidden Temple, Wild and Crazy Kids. Woo, those were the shows, yo. Those were the shows, Wild and Crazy Kids. You don't know what that is, do you? Listen, nope. they would have they had three hosts. Um, what's my man's name? Oh, Omar Gooding Jr., C- Cuba Gooding Jr. Oh, brother. yeah, I know him. He'd be a team leader, and there's two other people that were team leaders. There'd be like the black team, the pink team, and the blue team, and they would have these huge events, 
and they would all compete. It would be stuff like, all right, we're going to see which team can bring the most balloons across this field of shaving cream. You know what I'm saying? Like they would do all kind of outdoor like uh, activities with these large groups of kids and you would try to hope your team would win, man. I was so salty. I wanted to be on that show so bad. Look that up, Wild and Crazy Kids. I mean, there was just so many shows, but I say all that to say that slime was a big thing. Like, you know, Kids' Choice Awards, yeah. you get slime. Um, Gat was a slime growing up, came in this little container. But we never made our own slime growing up. So that I found that interesting when it made a resurgence. Yeah. And I was like, oh, y'all really like Going crazy. are making it and buying it. And then you're making it fart in class. And I'm like, really, bro? <laughs> but yeah, that's that was another item. And then the kandamas were dope. Um, those of you who don't know what that is, that's like the thing with the ball and the string on it. And you can do all kind of tricks. That had kids in the chokehold for quite a while. Oh yeah, as well. they're expensive yeah. now too, man. I saw one. I looked mm-hmm. it up today. I'm like, eh, forty dollars? Eh. Yeah. You. I'll be there. You ever see the um the commercial? The name of it is messing me up. It was uh, supposed to be like marketed as like a kids thing, and it was like this gravity ball, and it was like titanium or whatever, and people would sit there and do like this, and it'd be like floating. Fushigi. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I wanted one of them so bad. <laughs> that in the um in the power balance bands where you would put them on and have somebody try to push you, but you kept your balance. What I didn't see those. I remember those Fushigi. are the dumbest. They're the dumbest <laughs> things ever. I remember I had I'm like a, three. You had a Fushigi. And, not a fushigi, please. My mama would have been so mad if we spent all that money on just a I titanium want a bowl. Fushigi. I'm going to buy one. Oh, they're only $28 on Amazon. <laughs> See? <laughs> you you got to show up to the next podcast doing the little things. <laughs> Scamming people, yo. Let me read yeah. it. I'm going to read some reviews. <laughs> <laughs> Disappointed. So dumb. Don't know how this ball actually works. <laughs> Bought it for my grandson for Christmas. It came in a small, plain cardboard brown box. Not like the picture. Nothing in the box but a plastic ball. Wow, the ball. <laughs> oh, wait. A plastic ball stand. No directions in the ball. Hope the kids know what to do with it. To me, a waste of time ordering. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh, my God. And the the guy, he would say it so aggressively on the commercial. Yo. Fushigi. Fushigi. I was like, is it what really all that? Somebody broke theirs open. Yeah. Thank you for doing that, oh, whoever man. you are. Because I always wanted to know what was on the inside. I am crying, yo. Fushigi. You had balance I, bands? Yes. Did it work? And it was, no, they never worked. <laughs> I'll be, I'll, I'll, I'll be damned. Order them right now. $19.99 like two... and we'll give you a free shipping. Yes. You, wait, y'all bought them it, off TV? It said, I don't know if we bought them off TV or that store in the mall that said, as seen on TV. Where... Yo, I'm done, yo. And I remember I put two on my left arm because I said, I'm going to have double the balance. No. I... Someone pushed me. I fell. I'll be damned. Yeah, you fell yeah. because it takes some more. Ooh, these prayer beads are on sale. Oh man, hold on, yo! I gotta regain my balance in my brain because you got me crying, yo. What's up with you? Why is she wearing this as a fashion? They were just <clears throat> so many yo. dumb things came out when I was a kid. Yeah, so many dumb things. What? What are you? Putting oh my in, goodness! Wait, what are you putting in the time capsule though? <laughs> okay, I got um... <laughs> some more stuff. I got some more stuff after you, but what are you putting in the time capsule? I wish it wasn't objects. I wish it was like snap, like snapshots of culture growing up, so that people could see it. But um, okay, go ahead. The, 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 humor me. Okay, just random stuff. So, I would love to put a Tiger Beat magazine into a time capsule. What the hell is that? So Tiger Beat, it was basically. I used to be obsessed with these. So when I was younger, back when they had stuff marketed towards kids, you had your own version of magazines about like teen celebrities and child stars, basically. And it was called Tiger Beat. And you would be keeping up with like Lindsay Lohan, the Olsen twins, like Britney Spears, Justin Timberlake, all the different like up and coming stars. 
that were young, basically. And I used to read those from cover to cover. And so, and also they would always have like, at the back of the magazine, they would have like 50 big blown out posters of all these celebrities. Don't, please, let's not get into it. But I had posters all over my room I'm done. with the little, uh, the little tacky stuff, putty. Oh my goodness. I'm done. I would put that in a time capsule. I would put um, the chocolate calculator that you would get from the Scholastic Book Fair. I'll be damned. Now, it definitely did smell like chocolate. I'll, I'll give them that. But that thing broke after you tried to smell it and then try to calculate. Okay. Um, that's something I would love to put in a capsule because I would love for a kid like 100 years ago. from now open it up and be like now when the world is this and you, who would know no one would know um what else would i put in a capsule <laughs> honestly i would put a flip phone i would put That's dope. i would put a flip phone i think i would put you the motorola yeah yeah oh my god i would put a hot pink motorola in the capsule because that's that's the phone that I had for play as a kid because I mean it was dead it was out of service but I would play around with it um I would put that in the time capsule because I remember when I first got my first ever flip phone and I didn't know what the space bar <laughs> the space button was so all of my texts were one big sentence <laughs> yo what the I'll be damned <laughs> it's zero I didn't know that. Wow. <laughs> so, and so I'm I old because I did know that. <laughs> so I'll every be time damned. I would text somebody before I figured out that that was what the space button was for, like that's where the space button was, it would just be one big jumbo word that you would just have to like read. Yo, so I put that in there. You and have, you have I, some real life experience. Yeah, that and um, the original iPod. Yup, because I still have it. I still have the original iPod. Mm -hmm. It's not Bluetooth, which I'm very upset about, but I mean, hey, technology. I'm triggered now. Hmm. Matters none at this point, <laughs> but the iPod, right? That's when, mm -hmm. that's when shit was actually expensive. Like, Shit is yeah. expensive now, but it's it's a different level. I don't remember how much it cost, but it was um, it was a pretty penny back then. I'll it was, you, I, I, you know, a friend a friend of mine had a friend, and some some fell off the back of a truck, and one oh. came into my possession for like fifty dollars, and I had the connection cord for my car. I had, mm -hmm. and I already had a bunch of music. Like I loved my iPod, and I got in a car accident. My iPod ended up in my apartment somewhere because I didn't go. I don't go anywhere, right? And I had mm -hmm. some people over from work, and ever oh, since no. then, my iPod had been missing. Ah, uh. and I was so distraught because I, I mean, I had that iPod. I got it when I was in college, probably mm -hmm. like my sophomore year, maybe my junior year. I had that thing for like seven years. Like I had that thing for yeah. a long time. All my music was on it. Like this is, and for those of you who don't know, this was before your phone and iTunes yeah. and all that stuff was really like stable and popping and working. Like before that, you had to put like all your music on a on a chip and then put that in your phone and then yeah. use cords and stuff unless you had a fancier car where you could use Bluetooth. Like it was nuts, yo. But yeah, thanks for bringing up a painful memory. Because I'll be my, my dad, he had like this, he has this music hard drive, right? And it has like all these crazy different like club mixes, things like that from, I want to say like maybe back from when he was in school, like in college. And this guy was like a DJ and made it for him and gave it to him. I want to say that's the story. And so he's had it since. And so he synced the, like two iPods to it, one for him, one for my mom. And they have like over 700 songs on them. And I kid you not, when he gave me that iPod to use when I was in middle school, I'd be 
I'd be sitting in the back of the bus thinking, I'm so cool. I'm so cool. Like, I'm listening to all this music and all these different mixes that you cannot find nowadays. You can't find them anywhere and everything. So uh, iPods for sure. And I still have it, and it still works. And every now and then, I plug it up to my speakers mm. because Craig David, Fill Me In, Part 2, that remix, it I'll, doesn't I'll, exist. I'll, 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 I'll be down. It doesn't exist anywhere. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> Because why? Craig David. I love some Craig David. Craig I don't know why. David. Canadians, they were holding it down in the early 2000s. He's from know Canada? What. Yeah, he is. Him and Deborah Cox. Yeah. I thought yeah. he was like British. So is Tamia. Oh, wait. Is he an in it in it? I don't know. Oh, my mom just said he's an in it in it. Okay. What does that mean? You know, UK. Beans and toast in it in it. No, I don't know, which is why I asked the question. You literally did not answer my question. Oh, then <laughs> I say like, oh, they're in it, in it, because that's what British people be saying. That's all. I'll be down. He is British. Okay. Um, so tell your mama British. said hello. She's, oh. He said hello. So he's British. He likes yeah. the beans and toast. So this is what I was going to ask you. Hello. Oi, oi. <laughs> <laughs> why why when british people sing the accent go away but when thank they, you but when they okay. rap they still got it okay because you know i got into a heated debate with my dad <laughs> over this because um <laughs> marcia ambrosia yes. from flowetry tree yes mm, don't say yes i got beef with her what the heck i've always had marcia it's not me uh, marcia oh sorry yeah <laughs> marcia i don't know why i got beef with you girl i really try to like you yeah, I really try to like it. But my thing is, she'd been in the States since she was 20. Mm -hmm. Now she's, it's been about 20 plus years now. Mm -hmm. Girl, drop the accent. Grow up. Which Why you still got the British accent? You've been here longer. I'll be damned. What, let me, uh, okay. So before you start beef with people that, that may be able to help us out in the future, let me continue. Another thing that I would put in the time capsule. Oh, man. Mm. Wow. What would I put in the time? What else would I put in there? Wouldn't it? Definitely a, a flash drive or some type of storage device with episodes of this podcast so they could hear Ooh. civilized human beings speaking logically. Uh, 1,000%. <laughs> <I would. laughs> here we are. I would definitely put that there. Um, I would want to put some type of video game in there. Yes. From my era. I don't know what game I would give them. I would do Rock Band. You would mm -hmm. do Rock Band. Okay. Um, my favorite series is Gears of War. So I probably would give them the Gears of War series and the Xbox Series X. Um, what else? What's the name of the game? Dang. Oh, Dead to Rights Retribution. Ooh, that was one of my most favorite games, too. Uh, oh, and Luminous. Luminous was dope. It's a, it's a music puzzle game. I like that. Yeah, I would give them that. Uh, another thing I would have to give them, I'd have to give them the DVD of The Fifth Element, starring Bruce Willis. That is such a dope movie. Chris Tucker was in it, too. Mm -hmm. Love that movie. Love that movie. Oh, oh, would have to give them, would have to give them a DVD or Blu-ray collection or some type of digital version of Suits. The show Suits, that is oh, one of my goodness. favorite shows of all time. I've never had a desire to be a lawyer. It's a bunch of white people, I know. But yo, it is so entertaining. And Lewis Lit is freaking hilarious, yo. I think what I like about Suits is like, the characters are actually believable and those are people that you actually probably have worked with on mm -hmm. some level. But it's such a good show. What else you putting in your time capsule? Well, you brought up movies and I would definitely have to put all time my favorite children movies, Osmosis Jones, for sure. If you know me, you know that is my movie. I will sit and watch that Erica, movie. we've just bonded. I don't know <laughs> when where why or how but i bought oh it was movie day at the school 
And I, yes. bought, I bought it somewhere, but I still had the DVD. I'm 99.9% sure I still had the DVD of Osmosis Jones. I have the VCR tape upstairs in the attic. Not the VCR. Because I had a VCR in my room as a kid. And we had the Oh, you tapes. was fancy. Uh, no, that was that was hand me down right there. No, that's that was, fancy, yo. And I got a VCR. I almost did a backflip. That was crazy. You could watch I anything. Had it. I had it until I was about I want to say twelve. I want to say I was. I had it since I was about twelve. But Osmosis Jones, that is my all time favorite children's movie. Especially now, <laughs> if I watch it back now, I crack up. That club scene and <laughs> it's called the Zit. And he's yeah. like, this place about to blow <laughs> and everything because the club is pumping, it's going crazy, but it's really a zit that's <laughs> like pulsing. Yeah. Cracks me up every time. Realizing that the white blood cells are all police yeah. kind of cracks me up. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> it cracks me up to this day. And all, all the villains are germs. Cracks me up. That one and Shrek 2. Shrek 2 forever in Osmosis Jones. You got to watch those because Shrek 2, that whole scene where he's like, we got a white Bronco, white Bronco. And they got <laughs> the pepper spray scene when it's actually like a, grind, a grinder <laughs> yeah. of pepper. And the, the cat puts the boots when they plant the catnip on him. And he says, oh, that, that's not mine. Cracks me up to this day. I might have to go back and watch those. And the um, I made my dad watch the Christmas special with the Shrek Christmas special, and with the the three pigs. And for some reason, why are they like they're like Swedish? I want to say, mm -hmm. yeah. And they have like they have like a Swedish accent, and it cracks me up because they're all three of them are under a blanket, and he's like, yeah, pigs in a blanket, yeah, and they. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, you are so tickled. I want to have to watch these. Up. <clears throat> yes, and then the three blind mice crack me up because they're just walking around. <laughs> they just crack me up. The gingerbread mm. man, all of it. Those those movies were movies that were made for adults and kids to laugh at, and I love them so much more now that I'm older because you can see all yeah. of the adult jokes that yeah. they had in there. There's crossing lines. Yes, they cross a lot they, of lines. They were. For sure. But I loved it. I loved it. I, I will make sure that if it comes on the TV, I will be sat on the couch until it comes off. So, yeah. Oh, my God. You you, you brought up another memory for me. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> used, used, used to watch this with one of my exes. Hmm. Ratatouille. Oh, my goodness. I love that The movie. cooking rats. Yeah, you did. <laughs> I'll be down. I'll be down. Yes, I will put Ratatouille in there. That that was a great movie. Yeah, that was definitely a great movie. Oof, man, I don't know. We gonna have to revisit this. We gonna we we gonna have yeah. another episode where we talk about more time capsule stuff. Cause now I'm really trying to think. Like you know, hundred years, two hundred years in the future. What do I want these people to see? I think we named some good stuff though. Yeah. Um, we can't give them any food just because. Obviously. Honestly, I wish I could. Because I would want them to see like the crazy stuff that came out in like fast food. They need growing a pub up. They need a public sub. Um, if you put any McDonald's in there, it'll probably last. Uh, That's what I'm saying. I'm like, y'all, if a McRib was up in there, just so that they could okay. see that abomination. On that note, we're going to talk about. Because <laughs> <laughs> what in the world was that? We're gonna go ahead and do the switch over to our to our to our message to to the brothers, man. This is huge. <laughs> I'll make a rib. Because they and they say it's bad. Like you guys asked for. Who asked? Who asked for it? Somebody asked for it. Just like somebody asked for it. Brothers, 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 kings, kings walking on this earth, man. Um, I want you to really think about the first topic we talked about today, which is thinking about what you want to be remembered for. You know, uh, every day is filled with choices that we make, and we have to live with these choices. 
And these choices will have an impact on our reputation. They will have an impact on the people around us. They will have an impact on future decisions. And they will have... You hear that? No. (laughs) Heavenly Father. And they will have an impact on what people think about you. And if you don't like what people think about you, you can always change it. That's also another choice. If people know... I hope y'all didn't hear my throat, whatever that was that just came out. Did you hear that? It was like, yow. I don't even know what the fuck that was. Uh, <laughs> and I'm drinking water. I had a I had a Sprite at like noon today, so I don't know where this gas is can, came from. I, okay. It just said hello. Yeah, it just came like in the middle of my word, like all rude. But and I'm trying to talk to the brothers. Um, but yeah, you can always change the way people feel and think about you. Now it may take a long time, um, and there, there's always going to be a few people who try to remind you of who you were and not who you are. They can kick rocks because some people want you to be who you were because that's who they're comfortable with. That's yeah. who they're used to. And that's who they feel like they're equal to. And they feel like they're on your level. But when you evolve and you change and you grow and you do things differently, You might not say it, you might not even think it, you might not even feel it, you might not even care about it, but they think, oh, you better than me. Oh, he think he better than me. Like, you not even in competition. Some people be in competition with you and you don't even know it. I'll be damned. So, brothers, that's really really what I want you to do. I really want you to think about what you want to be remembered for and the work you got to put in to be remembered for just that. And ladies and gentlemen, that's it. I need to adjust the volume of this music. This joint is mad loud. Episode 302 of From My Experience Podcast, man. 302 episodes. Like it's 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 surreal to think about this podcast journey and how far we have come, man. And we're still here. So many people, I see people, yeah, I'm in a lot of podcast groups, man, and I try to give people hints and tips and tricks when they ask questions, but so many people are frustrated. And they're like, I'm at episode 20, I'm at episode 30, I'm at 50, and I only have 12 listeners, and how do I get sponsorships? I'm like, yo, like, you gotta put in some more work. Like, you you gotta build this thing, you gotta grow this thing, you gotta brand yourself, you gotta talk to people, you gotta try new things, but you gotta make sure that you're gonna, you gonna really wanna do this thing. You know what I'm saying? Like, for me, it's not a game, it's not a flash in the pan thing. This is forever ever forever ever forever ever that's what this is man so erica do you have any parting words mm. no i think that that sigh was enough for y'all sorry but i think that was really good i'll be down i'll be down until next time ladies and gentlemen take care of yourselves physically mentally financially and we'll catch y'all next time peace I think 